Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for a Chelsea news video. We've not seen one of these for quite some time and we've got some interesting topics to discuss today. Ian Martson, who's obviously been in the headlines this week for Dortmund. Jamal Musiala, very interesting story to come here. Benjamin Sesko, Conor Gallagher and then Aaron Ramsdale to finish this video off. If you're not yet subscribed to the George Benson Football Channel, now might be the time to do so. And whilst you're here, the support this week on the channel has been amazing. And if you could like the video to let me know that you like what we've got going on here, that would be grand. But if you don't, don't you bloody worry about it. I'll still sip my coffee and I'll still talk about the Chelsea news. Regardless, we begin. Ian Martson wants to leave Chelsea on a permanent deal in the summer. Chelsea is already informed about his plan. He feels very comfortable in Dortmund and is keen to stay with his release course set at 35 to 40 million euros. First thing, this is not a surprise. Second thing, it's not a surprise that Martin is actually doing a really good job in Borussia Dortmund. And the third thing is when you're scoring Champions League goals and quarterfinal victories against Atletico Madrid in front of the yellow wall, then, of course, Ian Martson is dreaming of staying at Borussia Dortmund right now. But obviously, from a Chelsea perspective, I can't help but look at the frailties that we've seen this season in the left-back position, the injuries to both Mark Kukurea, Ben Chilwell, and we've already sold Lewis Hall as well. And I get the feeling that when Chelsea potentially look at the left-back market, we're going to be looking at prices for left-backs that are outrageous and then we're going to be probably selling one in Ian Martson, who probably is going to be as good, if not better, than the left-backs that we're going to be investing in. And we're going to be selling in for far less money, which to me is absolutely bonkers. And again, I think it's one of those from the new ownership where this obviously there's a focus on trying to sell homegrown talent for pure profit. We've spoken about this on countless occasions. But I think sometimes we're potentially selling these players too soon. I think if we're going to talk about the project and we're going to talk about Pochettino giving t being given time, which we've obviously heard this week from the reports from David Ornstein, that that is what Chelsea are looking to do. But an evaluation will be had at the end of the season. It makes tomorrow's game against City massive for Pochettino. But in terms of like the planning for the future that we're doing, I think getting rid of Lewis Hall the way that we did and just being so blasé about Ian Martson and just basically being like, well... Yeah, if the money comes in, 35, 40 million, don't worry about it. But he's actually flipping killing it in Germany. So I don't know if it's just me that thinks that Chelsea will probably go in to the market for a left back potentially this summer. And I don't think we're going to get a left back for 35 million euros who is better than someone that we've already got at the club. So that's that. It's frustrating, but... To be honest, the way that he's doing and the way that he's playing in Germany right now is fantastic. I'm happy for him. I think he deserves it. He's not been given a sniff this season for whatever reason under Maurizio Pochettino. And it's not even like he's playing as a left winger in Dortmund. He's literally playing as a flipping left back and he's doing incredibly well. Many people say that he's a bit too short, but come on, man. This is the modern game. We need height in other areas across the field. Doesn't have to be the left back. But anyway, we move to discuss something incredibly interesting. And I personally believe, if you look at the thumbnail of this video, that Jamal Musiala is potentially exactly what Chelsea may need this summer. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when you look at this story here, Man City are planning a big push to sign Bayern Munich's Jamal Musiala this summer. City's interest is advanced and Chelsea are monitoring the situation. Top line here when we look at this headline that comes from The Guardian is that if Manchester City are in advanced talks, then Chelsea best have some kind of mad plan up their sleeve. Manchester City, I think they need a bit of a refresh. I think if you look at Erling Haaland's current form, when he's not bagging in the goals, they're relying so heavily on Kevin De Bruyne. Bernardo Silva who, by the way, can I just add this one in here? If Bernardo Silva leaves City this summer and Chelsea don't try and sign him, I know he just hit an awful penalty against Real Madrid, but try not to let the recency bias cloud the vision here. Bernardo Silva's unreal. He could be a phenomenal signing for Chelsea Football Club, by the way. 
But Jamal Musiala, he has been at Chelsea before in his career, which I always just think it's nice to hear of those kind of players that have obviously gone on to become big stars. The idea of them coming back is always a nice one. But I do think Chelsea could absolutely benefit by bringing in a big number 10. When you look at this season, you look at Nicholas Jackson, he's got 10 Premier League goals. You've got Cole Palmer on 20 Premier League goals. That's 30 Premier League goals between them. And then you've obviously got the wingers who are kind of contributing to that also, but not to great effect. I think Jamal Musiala, as a Chelsea signing right now, could be exactly what we need. Creatively, to spend, again, less pressure on Cole Palmer to always be the man having to deliver. And I think in terms of a profile, I think as we discussed in yesterday's video talking about Caicedo, Enzo, Gallagher, I think what Chelsea don't have with those players there is a definitive attack-minded, in the final third, can be lethal player. And I think that's what we need. And I think Musiala can absolutely be that. Can also play off the left too, which could be very useful for Chelsea. And I think between him and Cole Palmer, a lot of people, myself included, do think that Palmer can be at his absolute best in that number 10 role. But I also think he's got that much ability that we could see him utilised as that right winger that we've seen so often this season. And because he is that mercurial talent who can get on the ball, who makes the off-the-ball runs to make everything easier for his teammates, Cole Palmer, with a player of Musiala's ability, playing in a more central role could end up doing what Eden Hazard did on so many occasions. You remember that incredible, incredible attacking midfield trio of Oscar, Juan Mata, and then you've got Eden Hazard there as well. So many goals, so many contributions to the goals of the team with those players in there. Chelsea didn't necessarily need to have that striker to be scoring that many goals week after week. And Nicholas Jackson is Pretty, he's not, I wouldn't say quickly or slowly. He's, he's becoming someone who you can rely on. He's becoming someone who has become such a good striker at getting into the channels to allow Palmer to drift central because he operates at his best when he's in a central position. Jackson drifts out wide. He drifts out to the left as well. And I think in terms of attacking fluidity, when you're looking at having Nicholas Jackson, Jamal Musiala, Cole Palmer in the same team, I've got a feeling that this could just really work. Do you know what I mean? I think at the moment there's players that we're still unsure about, players that maybe aren't necessarily ready to step up to the level that Chelsea need to be Champions League contenders. I think Madweki could be a great player. Mudrik could be a great player. But like, are they consistently delivering at that level yet? No, Jamal Musiala is, despite being of a similar age. You've also got Raheem Sterling, who... At this point in time, unless he has a drastic uptake in fortunes, I think Sterling could be off in the summer, potentially, if the right bid comes in for him. So I think for Chelsea, having a bit of variety in those attacking areas is great, but at the same time, I think Jamal Musiala being back at Chelsea, it's just something I'd love to see. I think he's a mercurial talent. I think he's a top player. And if he wants to leave Bayern... I reckon we should rival Manchester City for him. Don't let another player with all that ability go to a club that we are looking to chase down. Don't make City better by letting them go for him. Chelsea need to be in there. I think he'd come to Chelsea. Just a personal opinion. But anyway, we move to discuss Benjamin Sesko, who's a name that we've spoken about before here on GBFC. And it's an interesting one again because my thoughts on Nicholas Jackson is that he's becoming... In, the, in like the present tense, he's becoming a good striker. So in terms of like my desperation for Chelsea to spend 120, 130, 140 million on a striker this summer, that desperation has kind of dwindled down a little bit, which is good because then we can look at other areas of the pitch and other potential options like your Musiala's. But Chelsea, Arsenal and Man United are among the clubs interested in Benjamin Sesko ahead of the summer. The 20-year-old... Striker has a 50 million euro, which is 42.7 million pounds, release clause. This is a lot less money than what we were talking about for Benjamin Sesco back in January. And this release clause, 42.7 million for a striker. He's not exactly set the world on fire this season. I think he's currently got 13 goals this year. Decent player, but I, 
Do you know what? The longer we go on in this video and the longer this season's gone on, I'm more inclined to just give Nicholas Jackson a shot. You know, Chelsea are not talking any, any longer about not being able to score. That issue is gone because Cole Palmer just delivers. You add someone like a Musiala into that, like I genuinely think then the service for even Cole Palmer becomes better. And we're talking about like comparing his goal scoring record to Haaland, who's got like so many players around him, providing him with opportunities and chances. He misses so many. Palmer doesn't miss anywhere near as many. He still misses, don't get me wrong. But like, do we really do we really need to spend big, big on a striker? I know I'm changing my tune massively here. But I, I stand by it. If we're going to buy a striker, it needs to be someone experienced. It needs to be someone that we're not allowing for the Nicholas Jackson season that we've had this year, which is kind of like a go on then, like nurture, get, get yourself settled in. And now we're seeing the labours. We're seeing the fruits of the labours of Nicholas Jackson being given in a betting in season. But at the start of the season, the reason why only now we're going up to eighth is because at the start of the year, we couldn't score. So if we're going to bring in a striker, having two 21, 20-year-olds, Benjamin Sesko is 20, having two of those that we're kind of just waiting to explode, waiting to nurture, waiting to mold, I'm not sure. Look, I've already said I wanted Osimhen. I think it's going to be too expensive. Rumors are he's close to PSG. Harry Kane, I mean, I've said it so many times, I'd absolutely flip and love it. Benjamin Sesko, good player. But again, I think if we're buying a striker at this point, I think we're better off going for another winger or a number 10. Just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments down below. The next story is Newcastle study Chelsea stars in scouting mission as Connor Gallagher set to go. I think Gallagher would do very well at Newcastle. I've said it many times and I said it yesterday. I think when it comes to defining Gallagher's role, I think he could be great in a pivot. I really do. I think he works super hard. And as a 10... If we're comparing him to the guy that we've spoken about earlier, Jamal Musiala, Jamal Musiala, I think, does that job better than Gallagher in terms of, like, outright, this is what I do on the football pitch. I think Gallagher is such a great player for Chelsea to have. He wants to be at Chelsea. I think there's a role for him massively in a Pochettino team. Poch has relied on him so much this season, too. And he's been Chelsea captain so many times because Rhys James and Ben Chilwell are always injured. So... I don't want to see this. I don't want to see Newcastle sign Gallagher because I think he'd do very well there. The final story, Aaron Ramsdale has interest from Chelsea as well as other Premier League clubs and clubs abroad. Look, Aaron Ramsdale, I think he's a good goalkeeper. And I think his time at Arsenal has been tainted by Raya coming in. And he's obviously lost his place now as the number one. I'm not fully convinced that Aaron Ramsdale is significantly better than Petrovic. I'm not. I've not seen enough to suggest that. Brilliant shot stopper on his day. He will save everything. A bit like Jordan Pickford. Like Jordan Pickford just has those days where he's unreal and nothing's getting past him. But I wouldn't say that makes him an all-round great goalie. And I kind of see Aaron Ramsdale in that same light. And it just depends on the price for this one, really. But is it once again worth going in 20, 30 million for another goalkeeper who's not a definitive number one. There's many questions right now with these Chelsea players and with this Chelsea squad. And I don't know if Ramsdale, I don't think Ramsdale is the answer at this point. But let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Just wanted to give you guys a little update on what is currently going on regarding Chelsea news. I think it's interesting to look at the different kinds of players now that we're currently being linked with, even though the transfer window is obviously not open now for still for a while. But I think looking at players like Musiala, the Guardian report in this one, I do think Chelsea will be in that conversation, probably at the moment just seeing how advanced those talks are with Man City. But I'd love that. I think he's a quality footballer. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and stay tuned later on today to GBFC for the Man City FA Cup preview. This one's massive. Come on, you blues.